Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you a technique that will ultimately save you a lot of time, frustration, and guarantee a quicker production of multiple parts. Probably increase the quality and consistency of those parts as well. I'm going to start off with a piece of half inch aluminum. It's about 12.7 millimeters. <laughs> about. Anyway, from that particular material, we're going to make one of these guys. Now let's take a look at this part in greater detail. It's got a nose radius out here. It's got an undercut of a specific width and specific diameter. It has a second undercut that's a little bit different than the front. And I'm going to do this all with the same tool. So everybody that's going to comment, hey, by all means, use a bigger tool for the second groove. You're absolutely right. But if you don't have one, I'm going to show you the technique that will get you past that obstacle. It's got two chamfers on it of a very specific size. And uh, if I didn't already say the nose radius, well, the nose radius you can see, and it will be a very specific length. I'm going to show you how to allow your absolute and incremental buttons on your digital to communicate with each other, just like programming a CNC machine. If you have a newer digital that has a T1, T2, T3 position, well, I guess that's... Uh, your benefit and if you don't well, I'm going to show you how I get around that because the digital on my machine only has a z-axis readout carriage readout that's it I don't have a cross slide readout I don't have anything else just the carriage so back in the day before digital readouts became a popular thing on edge and lace they had a thing called the travel dial so I refer to any carriage movement as a TD movement travel dial movement I'm going to show you the dimensioning scheme on this part. I'm going to show you the tools. I'm going to show you the setup. And then we're going to knock a couple of them out. And you're going to say, I really like that. And if you didn't understand it, well, go back and watch it again. Because this is something you should nail down. All right, let's take a look at the drawing on this, the dimensioning scheme on this. And then we'll go out and actually make this part. Actually, we're going to make several of them. Let's put that material back on there. All right, let's take a look at the drawing. All right, let's take a look at the dimensioning scheme on this part. And it is always nice when you receive or create a drawing in the presentation that the person making the part is going to benefit by the most. Uh, imagine if this drawing was flipped around and this part here was on the right-hand side. Well, that's not realistic because chances are you're not going to make the part that way. You're going to turn it. You're going to put the radius undercut, undercut, turn it, and off it drops. So for the secondary, naturally everybody works differently, but for concentricity, for sake of all of these features lining up and being true to each other, it's nice if you can do them all at the same time. And the final operation is just to face the back off or press it up against a sander or whatever, depending on the dimensions. Now, unfortunately, my, <laughs> my pro engineer drawing format uh, defaults are all four decimal places. So this is not aerospace quality, super critical, four place decimal, you know, plus or minus five tenths on this. This is a little button sample. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to face the part off using the absolute positioning option on the digital readout. Face it off, zero the part. That way you know exactly where this shoulder is, exactly how long the part needs to be, and you don't waste any time. So the facing tool is the first one to zero out. After that, when you zeroed out your absolute digital for the face of this particular part, zero out the incremental at the same time. You say, why should I do that? Because I'm not going to use the incremental. Well, you know, the incremental is going to tell you where the carriage is at, and the absolute is the value that you're going to record. So you're going to make a little program on a piece of paper. You're going to write it all down, and the second part is going to pop off that machine so fast, you're going to pat yourself on the back. So let's uh, put this into practice, show you exactly how fast you can make a part like this if you let your absolute and incremental talk to each other. Like I said, I'm going to use one tool to do these. If you had a bunch of these, naturally using two tools might be the better way to go. Uh, CNC is just going to profile that out, so it's no big deal. But for sake of the demonstration, one tool, okay? One tool for this, one tool for the undercuts, one tool for the chamfers, one tool for all the OD turning. So there's a bunch of tools that need to be coordinated. Let's take a look. I think you're going to like this one. 
All right, guys, let's take a look at the philosophy behind turning this part. The tool I'm going to use will be a facing and turning tool so I can establish the ODs and whatever faces I choose to finish, I will finish with that one tool. The face of this tool right here will be ground zero. It will be the parent feature. The facing tool will be the parent tool. When you face the part off, zero out your digital in your absolute position, okay? For sake of this demonstration and so that you can follow along, I created a little Word document that's going to be a little cleaner than my handwriting at this time of the morning. So let's just uh, populate this with a bunch of numbers and I'll show you what they all mean and I'll put a still shot of this at the end so you can study it should you so desire. All right, let's face this part off, establish a zero. This is the point where you want to zero out your digital absolute positioning, digital zero. This is now the center of the universe right here. This, pull, this tool, this face, this setting is telling everything where to go from this point forward. Let's zero out the undercut tool. I'm going to use a black sharpie marker on the face of the tool and move the carriage in until the tool leaves a witness mark on this face right here. This line on the face of the part is larger than the feature that's ultimately going to be turned on there, so that's okay to make contact like that. I backed my carriage off a couple of thousands and I'm going to pulse the tool in until it just starts to dust cut face that off. And I have to apologize for the procedure here. If I were to put a light on that, it washes it completely out. So sensitivity of the camera, I'm working almost in the dark and it's a little bit tough. All right, I made contact. I am very close with the tool. Back the carriage out. I'm going to come in and out with the tool as I move the carriage towards the 5C marker, as I move it towards the head, and I'm looking for it to face it off. I know right now that the tool has made contact with the face of the part. I am about a four tenths penetration onto the face of this part. So the last pass that didn't hit it, and the pass that did hit it was only a five tenths move. So as far as we're all concerned, we're golden. Right now I'm going to go back to the digital, and this is where the magic starts happening. Let's go up to the digital. The digital on this machine has one axis, and I am A-OK -okay with that. It shouldn't be an X-axis, it should be a Z-axis, because the Z is always the spindle. 299 minus 299 is where this tool comes in contact with the part. Okay? Remember that, minus 299. I'm going to back it out to zero. This is where the carriage is when the facing tool cut the face of that part. So I now know that at 299 more, the undercut tool is in the same location it was when it makes contact. At this point, I'm going to go to incremental. And zero that out. Okay, incremental. Don't forget to go back and forth here. That's really important. If you're in an incremental and you're working absolute, blah blah blah. Well, it's going to bite you, so don't let it bite you. Currently in incremental, the first undercut on the part is 250 in. So now I'm going to move this to 250. Try not to jump out the window yet, guys. This is a learning curve, and this is only for the first part. Okay. 250. Right now, that undercut tool on my carriage is exactly where it needs to be to finish up that feature. Now, you don't want to have to go back and forth between absolute and incremental during the process. So I'm going to go back to absolute right now. And that tells me that the reading right from the get-go, face it off, leave it in absolute, put the 
in, uh, undercut tool in and go to your position, that undercut tool needs to be sitting at 549 in order to create a 250 feature. So on my process sheet, this process sheet, the 200 diameter undercut, the TD reading, it's, to me that stands for travel dial, but you can call it the digital. So for the 200 undercut, the digital is going to read minus 549. This will make sense, so hang in there. The larger diameter undercut is sitting at 480. So I'm going to go back to incremental. And I'm going to move to 480. Back to absolute. 779 now from the absolute position. So for the second undercut, 779, although the print says 480. Let's load up the parting tool and see what happens there. If you're a long time viewer to this channel, you'll know that I use a razor blade or a thin scale to find this side of my parting tool because that's the side that it's going to establish the length of your tool. I'm going to drag a razor blade across the front of the tool and right now it's hitting that parting tool. Listen for the tick. When the tool is in line with the edge of the parting tool the razor blade will slip up and down just fine. But as soon as that parting tool gets beyond the face of the tool, beyond the face of the part, you're going to hear it click. You don't want to hear a thing. Hear the tick? Bump it in until there's no noise. Okay. We're good. You can't hear it. You can't feel it. Now we're going to go back up to the digital. We're going to zero out the digital. Or actually, we're going to move the digital over to the incremental side and zero it out. Let's do that. I know that the overall length of my part is 600, so I'm going to go 605. I know I'm going to flip the part around and face the back off. I'm going to leave extra material to do that. Going for 605. Incremental. Make sure you're in the incremental now. Parting tool is now positioned to part off a part that's 605 thousandths long. Based on the incremental positioning, I'm going back to the absolute. This is the reading that I'm going to put on my process sheet. 1.3245 minus... Keep in mind, guys, that that shoulder right there formed by the inside of this parting tool gives me 605. There is extra material on the inside of this groove on that side. Keep that in mind. That's important to remember. Let's set up the radius tool. We're going to do this with all the tools. So you can fast forward and get past this to the meat and potatoes of this video, and I'll post the time in the bottom if I remember to do that. So hang in there. Let's go back to the other tools. Most important part of this lesson right now is just to record all these numbers. Be patient and don't forget to bounce back and forth between the absolute and incremental. You do not want to mess that up. Not a good thing. I'm going to go for the nose radius. Any readings on your cross slide will be established at a later date. Right now this is strictly the digital.
I'm going to move the carriage in until the radius runs out almost to the edge of the tool. This is a form tool, a 125 diameter form tool. Right now it doesn't matter if the digital is in the absolute or the incremental. Just get the tool to end up where you want it. That was strictly a carriage move, and because the carriage is in a final position right now, I'm going to read the absolute positioning based on the facing operation, okay? This is not a feature that has to be referenced a certain distance from the face. It's just a plunge it in, let's see what we get. So I'm going to read the digital readout, it says 564, minus 564. I need a guaranteed finished diameter on here in order to set my chamfer tools. So that will be the next thing I'll do is actually turn the two finished diameters on here, the 300 and the 450. Let's do that. Whatever reading you currently have on your cross slide dial, write that on the process sheet right now. This is a finished diameter and it is 5 thou shy of where it should be because I'm going to finish that face with the undercut tool and mention that before. Okay, record this number right now for that diameter. Continue with the operation by finishing the back diameter, 450. You now have a finished diameter here as well, so record this setting on your cross slide on your process sheet. Okay, take the number from your dial and record that on your process sheet right now. When you are pleased with how that radius runs out on the tool, record that number from your cross slide dial on your process sheet. And now move the carriage to the previously established digital number. Just from past experience, anytime you turn aluminum, it has a tendency to smear and push in the direction of the cut. I'm going to put the parting tool back in and I'm going to reestablish this groove back here to knock out any uglies that may have smeared into the cut as I was doing it. I need a sharp corner back here to coordinate the chamfer tools. Anybody want to guess what tools next? Undercut tools next. Here we go. We've already established the zero in the incremental movements on the process sheet. So just move the carriage over to your specific number that you established and plunge it into the required diameter. Record the number on the dial at the bottom of the groove. Put that number on your process sheet. Now here's where it gets fun, guys, and try to follow along. Sorry this is long-winded, but this is important to nail down. If you can nail it down, it'll become second nature, and you'll be glad you did. I'm moving on to the second groove. The second groove is wider than the first groove, so there's going to be a shift. I know that the number that I established previously is the back side of the groove. So whatever the width of the groove is, well, we're just going to have to make a small carriage shift to establish the width. So we don't want to go any further than the initial reading that we established. And this will make sense in a second. 
We're going with 779 on the dial because that's what was established early on. That is the finished backside dimension on the print. Currently sitting on a finished radius, finished diameter, finished undercut, finished undercut, finished diameters. Now we're looking for the front and the rear chamfers. I'm going to move the chamfer tool into a position such that I can move the entire carriage 30 thousandths and not run out of tool here. That's important. I'm going to have to look down on this because this is really dark where I'm at. All right, let's look for the edge right here to go away. Just barely touch it. Then we're going to move over to the incremental zero for this tool. The feature that I want as a result, in the end feature, is called out as 030. I'm going to give it 028 because of the contact here. You can see, when you can see a chamfer like that, you've made more than just initial contact. You're into it for a couple of thousand. So I'm going to move 028. First, I'm going to zero out my digital incrementally zero incremental right now done i'm going to move the entire carriage in 28 out on the incremental zero Whatever number you have on your cross slide dial, put that on the process sheet because that's important. Okay, the digital readout is still reading 28 that incremental. Record this number on your process sheet. Now switch back over to absolute on your digital. And the absolute reading will be the reading you'll go to when you're making the final part. That is 855. I'm going to do this exact same procedure for the backside chamfer. I want to chamfer it before it falls off just because the tool's in, everything is hot and concentric. And let's do it. Now remember that the backside has an additional five. So once you make contact, you'll have to go 30 plus in order to allow for the material you left on the back of this part. I'm going to change back over to incremental at this point. Fire up the machine, bury the chamfer tool, make contact, away we go. Once you're pleased that you have a chamfer tool that's making contact with that back square corner, zero out the incremental dial right now. Zero it out. Make sure you're in incremental. Zero it out. I'm going to back it out 35 that way. Record this number on your dial. It would be ideal if the front and rear chamfer dial settings were the same, but it doesn't always work out that way. Ideal is the same number, that way it's a lot easier on your brain if you're making a lot of these. Switch the digital back over to absolute and record that position. Depending on how the print looks, what the print calls out, your level of confidence, whatever, now is a good time to deburr that particular O-ring groove right there. I'm going to do mine with a tool, and I'm going to put a light on it because I just can't stand how dark it is.
All right. I'm going to use the same chamfer tool to deburr those. I'm going to do this by eye. Now I know what the previous setting was for the parting tool. I'm going to put the parting tool back in there, go to that setting, and drop this piece off. And we're going to see how fast we can replicate this piece with the process sheet that we just developed. I can tell you, and I've got to be honest enough to say, if I was sitting in class and my instructor showed me something like this, I would shut the book and go make cookies or something because, man, it's a lot to absorb. So don't feel bad if you're sitting there scratching your head. A lot of back and forth, but once you understand the concept, I think you'll be in good shape. And today's parts catcher was supplied by Bob, so thank you Bob. We're going to give this a shot, see how that works out. A simple slash cut cardboard tube. Looks like a winner. Boom. Love it. Nice, Bob. All right, let's take a look at the part. Let's take a look at the print. It is always nice to survey a print when somebody hands you a print. Let's see if we can zoom out on that. It is always nice to survey the print when someone hands you a print. For this little detail right here, seven times or 700 times or whatever, you look at a part like this and you go, oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then you realize it's only this big, and all of a sudden it's not so much fun anymore. Anyway, let's take a look at the sheet. As I was doing what I was doing, I wrote this all down. Facing tool faces the part off. The absolute position was zero. The 300 diameter is a true move with this tool, so there's no... Allowances, no funky numbers going on. We just moved 245, leaving 5 for the facing operation. On my cross slide dial, these are all the dial numbers to establish the features required. PTD, parting tool dial, travel dial, or the digital, the digital, shows me this number and the dial you just feed straight through until the part drops off. Front and rear chamfer values established. So now this is the Bible. This is the holy grail of numbers for the day. Stick this to the machine with a magnet, and you saw it took about 20 minutes-ish to set this up, coordinate everything, explain and film everything. Let's see how fast the second one drops off. Real time. Here we go. I think it's important to mention that the entire second part that I'm going to do right now, I'm going to let the camera run, no accelerated footage. And I do not have to mess with the absolute or the incremental during this procedure. After I face the part off, I will zero out the absolute position and I will go to my process sheet and read the numbers from the previous part. Here we go. Start the clock. <laughs>
Okay, that's the first part that we did. That's the setup piece. And the second piece is right there. Now, when I made the second piece, the only numbers that I paid attention to were the diameters because all of the lengths were just not what it said on the print, that's for sure. Dial that out. Here is the process sheet. And you may have to watch this video more than one time to understand exactly what is going on. But the incremental positioning, the zero on the incremental positioning at initial contact of any tools downstream from the facing tool is your best friend. Just don't touch that absolute all the way through. The only time you reset the absolute is on the second part in line, third part in line, whatever. So there you go. I will still frame this in case you want to pay attention to what just happened. And as usual, I thank you for watching. I know this is a little overwhelming, but this is a process that works really well. And if you have a bunch of pieces that look like this or similar or whatever, and you don't want to pull your hair out, take the time to establish something like that, and you can knock these things out all day. Half the time I was making the second part, I wasn't even looking at the part. I was looking at the digital readout for the values previously established. Woo. Well, guys, that's an awful lot to absorb in a very short period of time. You may have to look at that a couple of times. But in a nutshell, establish the face absolute zero, and then forget about that absolute button from then on. Anytime you register a tool or want to find out where a tool is going to be, hit the incremental button, zero it out once the tool makes contact, shift the tool to the final feature, and then go back and hit the absolute button to see where the carriage really is. That's the number you want to record on your process sheet. I cannot imagine running a lathe without a pad and a pen by my side. I just can't imagine it. I would, I would, uh, I would struggle. I would honestly struggle. I've been doing it that way for many years. So come up with your own language, come up with your own symbols, signs, whatever, abbreviations, initials, and try that procedure. It works really well. Start off with the really simple part and you'll be surprised uh, at how well it works. Thank you to everybody that has stopped by the shop recently. Thank you to everybody that continues to hit the website. Uh, the little pallets are still in stock, but they're going quick. If you're interested in one of those, you better get it while it lasts. Hit that subscribe button. Stop by the Patreon page. Maybe there's something that will uh, suit your fancy. Thank you very much. Uh, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well and happy and safe. There's a lot of bad things happening, and, and we are truly blessed to be safe where we are, at least where I am, and I am grateful. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Till next time, guys, I'm out. And a little special peek for all you guys that hung in until the very last minute. Guess what model I'm working on right now. Mini milling machine series coming up. Boom. I'm out. <laughs> Whew.